Oh, that guy's a good bite right there. That's a better fish. That fish taking some line. Hey guys, I'm Peter Melhorn. In this video, we're going trolling for catfish. <music> Alright guys, the plan's pretty simple today. I'm um, just trying to cover water uh, trolling. Uh, I'm dragging baits along around 0.4, 0.5. We don't have a lot of wind yet. Uh, but if you look back over my shoulder, the skies are kind of dark. It's the middle of August. It's pretty warm, but it's cooled off a little bit today. We've got some cloud cover. We've got storms coming in. So what I'm trying to do is get out here. Got a little free time in the afternoon. I had to work this morning. Got a little free time. And I'm just going to try to get out here and catch some fish before these storms roll in. They're south of me. I'm watching them on the radar. Uh, it's really nice right now. The, the cloud cover, uh, the, the approaching storms is keeping a lot of the pleasure boat traffic off the lake. So it's uh, very nice. Water temperatures around 88 degrees. Again, it's August. It's warm. But uh, just doing some trolling, slow trolling here with the trolling motor, covering some water, and just seeing if I can find some fish. I got a fish. It's on my bait rod. It's feeling like catfish. Hearing some thunder off in the distance. Look over there behind me. You can see it darkening up. Luckily, that's going away from us. Yes, yeah, old channel cat. Let's see if I can get it in the boat without losing it. Ah, there we go. There we go. Got a jet coming straight over my head. That hook out. There you see. This hook out. Bam. A little channel cat just came up the channel edge. Was in the river channel, came across the flat on the backside. It's coming up the edge. Got this fella. It's the only bite I've had, so we'll see what happens. Uh, small pieces of bait these are just uh, ones i've got out for my perch rods whenever i'm trolling along like this real slow i'll put out one of these little double hook rigs and uh put it down there try to get some bait on and uh, it's only bite so far uh it's really beautiful weather for the middle of the summer i got one boat over here pulling a float that's been the only one so far so hopefully i can get on some before that stuff over there gets on me well, there you go there's a channel cat in the boat uh not exactly what we're looking for and uh definitely wasn't on the rod i expected it to have it on but uh anyway it is what it is catching a fish putting one in the boat i'm gonna keep on drifting and dragging out here see if i can find something can you believe this i got another one on my bait rod Look like another herky jerky channel cat another plane too Sucker, come on, baby. Oh, doubles. I got deuces. Oh, the channel cat came off. Had a channel cat on there. And I've got this white perch, which will become bait for me. Get down back in the water. It's a white perch. We use these as bait. Look similar to a white bass. They're different. There's some perch in here. Yeah, there was a channel cat on there too. Uh, that's rare. Uh, oh, got it going again. Uh, I think I'm on some perch. The uh, This one definitely feels like a perch. Yep, deuces on that one. Boom, almost a school of perch. Well, there's something tried to eat it already. Generally speaking, when I get on the perch, it can be a very good place to catch catfish. Uh, if fish are feeding normally, which uh, we're not exactly in our normal world of feeding right now, but uh, anytime I'm drifting and find these fish, uh, a lot of times there's blues around them, uh, flatheads too, especially if you get into the perch around any kind of structure, if there's trees, brush piles, that kind of thing. So uh, it's a good sign for me uh, when I start to come across perch. So see if we can get a few more. This clouds are starting to roll in. I'm keeping an eye on the sky, but it ain't looking good. This stuff's west of here, but it looks like it's starting to swell a little bit. I'm not seeing any lightning yet, but there is some on with a sill south of here. So I don't know how much longer I got here before I'm going to have to make a run up the lake to duck out of this. 
Yeah, stuff that's going to stay west of me. That's what I'm seeing over here. But this stuff down here is what's got me concerned. And it looks like it's at least going to nick me. Oh, wow. That's what they look like on the screen right there, boys. That is a pile of them. That is all perch. I should be able to get on some here. Let me reel up through it. There they go. They're hitting it as I come up through it. Boom. There they go. Oh, yeah. They are stacked up. Now, what I'll do is I got the trolling motor on. What I'm going to do is I'll turn that trolling motor off. Boom. Stop it. What I'll do is just continue to drift with the wind right here. Maybe try to stay on them. They are. I'm not going all the way to the bottom. Boom. There they go. I'm just going to go about halfway because these things are stacked up well up in the water column. What you can also do is if you've got a sabiki rig, which is like one of these multi-hook type rigs, drop one of those down and you catch six or seven of them at a time. Look at the thump, 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 thump. Depending on what you're keying on, they may be in there feeding on some shad. They may just be all fired up over something. It's hard to tell. There's a pile of them though. Sometimes it takes a second. Sometimes they won't hit stuff right away. I've noticed, especially fishing under the lights, uh, sometimes these fish if they're keyed on the little bitty thread fin that are out here right now they will not hit these baits uh, not hit the cut bait and if you drop minnows down they're more likely to hit it but uh, sometimes they get so focused on chasing the shit boom I got him I could tell the line didn't go back down another one was following it to the top I'll stick another piece of bait on here all I'm doing is just putting a little bitty piece. That's what it looks like. A little bitty piece of bait on there. I'll trim me off a little piece here. That's what it looks like. A little bitty piece. And they will eat this stuff like crazy. Um, minnows are your best bet for catching these fish. Absolutely the best way to go. But... Uh, when they get schooled up, they'll hit the uh, they'll hit the cut bait, and these are their own kind. That's a piece of perch that I'm dropping down there. It's one of the great things about uh, this lake and perch, even though a lot of people hate them. Uh, they're a great way to pass the time when you're out fishing for catfish. Uh, they are a great fish to fish for just for the fun of it, because you can get onto a lot of them. Uh, especially when they're feeding really good. They were stacked up good today, but they were not exactly on fire with the bite. But uh, there's a lot of people that don't like them, uh, but I think our catfish population in the Catawba Chain of Lakes and also in the Yadkin has really just flourished because of them because they're a great food source, a larger fish, and uh, man, they're, they're fun to catch when they're biting. And uh, great way to stock up your bait tank or your freezer with good catfish bait. Boom, got him. Didn't take long. Oh, doubles. Deuces. Deuces. Got two of them. I just dropped that thing down there and felt one little thump. Puff. Had one on there. That's pretty cool. I'm letting it get down about halfway. Bang, oh, got him. Got one anyway. I'm gonna get two. Trying to get me deuces again. I like getting deuces. These things are fun to catch. They're addictive. It's like eating potato chips, man. Once you get to get them biting and you see them on the sonar, just keep fishing for them. Boom, got a fish right there. Just put my rod down. Uh, a catfish. Oh, I think he pulled off. Dang. Come around the edge of some of these uh, perch schools. I think this one pulled off. Small fish, wasn't big. Don't know where the blues are. Hadn't caught one yet. Come across some good water through here. I think it looks good on that. It's just been too big a bait for it. I don't know. I keep drifting through here. These uh, perch, if nothing else, are keeping me entertained. 
kind of give you a quick info on my setup. If you look over my shoulder, I've got two rods. There's one there, there's one right there. Those two rods in the center go out the furthest, probably 125 feet. If you look right here, there's two rods on the side. Those are in a little bit closer, maybe about 100 feet. This rod right over here, and there's another one on this side that goes straight out the sides. Those are back probably about 75 feet. What I'm doing is staggering my lines and how far they are behind the boat. I do not fish lines directly underneath the boat. I put them out behind the boat, away from the boat. I do this for a couple of reasons. I think it helps with the spread. I also think by staggering the lines, it helps from getting them tangled. You'll still get tangled, but I think having that spread out there, staggering the lines as they go out will help you uh, from getting tangled when the fish takes and go off to the side. If you can kind of imagine, it's almost like my hand. If you can imagine six lines going out there, this one's closer, this one's further out, these here are kind of a little bit closer, so kind of staggered out like that. And that, you know, that length of line seems to help. Nothing wrong with fishing them under the boat. Sometimes I do. I just feel that uh, for a couple of reasons, it's not so much the boat uh, spooking the fish as it is the angle of the line and the rod. I think it helps with hookups, uh, hooking into fish better than fishing straight under the boat. Not that you can't catch fish fishing straight under the boat because you can, but when you're dragging and drifting, slow trolling like this, I think having those lines out, the angle of the rod, and then that angle of line, I think really helps with the hookups, especially when you're using circle hooks. Man, I think we got a little bitty fish going on that rod, and I mean little, as in little, he can't even pull it over. I don't even know if he's got the bait in his mouth, to be perfectly honest. It's just bouncing like it's a bite. There's a little, uh, starting to hang a little something. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a little bitty channel cat on there. I'm gonna nurse him in. This is what I call walleye fishing. Oh, that guy's a good bite right there. That's a better fish. That fish taking some line. Let me get this one out of the way. I'm gonna step the pace up here a little bit. Yeah, I call it walleye fishing because any of you guys that fish for walleyes troll for them. I've, I've never fished for them, but I've watched the guys on TV fish for them and I usually nurse them in. They just kind of slow roll them, don't put any pressure on them. Him under the drift sock. There he goes. Channel cut. Oh, that's a good fit. Look at that bite. That's a good bite. We got deuces, baby. Deuces. Channel cat, just as I thought. Just as I suspected. Good looking little fish. Fish? Flip him back. I'm gonna get this one back in the water. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not going crazy trying to get to that rod, well, I'm using circle hooks. Circle hooks with a barb. And generally speaking, as long as that rod's got some bend or some tension on it, that fish ain't going nowhere. Let's just see if we can get him in and see how big he is. Took a little bit of line. I don't think it's a monster, but I think it's going to be our biggest of the day. That makes me happy. We pulling. He pulling. Might have went across some lines here. Let's we'll see where he's at. If I can drive him back to this side of the boat. May have to go to the other side. For a second. Let's see if he'll swim back over here. Sometimes if you just kind of lead them where you want them to go, they'll start to go to that path. Least resistance there, just take up the line. Ah, he's dead in the middle of my lines. I'm gonna have to go to the other side. Oh yeah, he's starting to swim off now. Make a move to the other side of the boat. Coming to the top, that tells me it's a blue. It's kind of swimming off. I'm gonna get the Good old bugger grip. I think he's a bugger grip size fish. That means he's not nettable. At least I don't think so. May not know he's hooked yet. Oh, oh, it's a flathead. Shh, don't tell nobody. Shh, it's a flathead. Shh, don't say anything. If he doesn't know that we know. Oh, stay down there. It's a flathead. 
Good looking flathead. Got him. Easy. Boom, got another one smoking line right behind me. That was a gar. I don't think that stayed hooked up. That looked like a gar bite. Oh yeah, just a flatty. Daytime flatheads, look at that. We love flatheads anytime. But we especially like them during the middle of the day. Good fish. Good looking fish. Boom, something on that rod too. I think there's some action over here near the bank, guys. Good looking fish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Still there, yep, I'm still buttoned up. It's just one fish after another. This be a channel cat, most likely. A little head shaking. Yes, sir. Man. Get all these hooks away from my hand. The biggest danger when these things go to flailing. Bam. Oh, oh. Y'all know what we're missing. I think. Yeah, a blue. We haven't caught a blue yet. I need a blue to get my slam now. This is going to be a quest to find a blue cat now. I got my channel cat, got a flathead. I got to find me a blue. Well, bam, there you go. A daytime flathead, middle of the day, too. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon on cut bait. Just goes to show you, you can catch them during the middle of the day. You can catch them on cut bait. It doesn't always have to be live bait. Now, I mean, I'm fishing in a lake. I think reservoir flatheads behave a little differently uh, than river flatheads. Uh, you know, uh, nothing against using a live bait. I use it. But uh, as I've said many times, the majority of my flathead catfish come on uh, cut bait, and I never hesitate using it to fish for flatheads. Uh, I've got uh, several channel cats now. We got that flathead, so I'm missing a blue. I need a blue so I can get my slam, my Lake Wiley slam. I got these storms to the west of me. Uh, they're coming in from the south, they're to the west right now. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on the radar. I'm kind of came back into a little creek here, uh, kind of a narrow little pocket. Uh, sometimes there's some blues in here. This time of the year, I'm going to drag this, see if I can get that blue, uh, and try to do it before these storms hit me. All right, guys, we're just reeling them in. Matter of fact, the motor is running. I got some rain coming. That storm sail, I can see the rain. I'm getting ready to get soaking wet. I had a fish go, I had a rod go. So I'm trying to muscle this sucker in real quick. Don't know if it's a blue or a channel. Let's see if I can get my slam though. Oh, I can see the rain. It's a blue, it's a blue, it's a blue. It is a blue, yes. My Lake Wiley slam right there, guys. Bag alive. I ain't wasting no time on this one. It's been a pretty good day. For the amount of time I was out here, I didn't get the fish really, really long. Uh, six fish in about, I don't know, three hours. Decent bite. But I got to get out of here before that rain gets me. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. And here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.